okay, and just in case you are doing this after missing class or if it's an async day, I'll try and talk you through this worksheet. So we've been talking about exponential functions, but today we're going to look at a different one. And I want you to give it a shot to try and figure this out. So what I'd like you to try and do is think about x is your input, y is your output. What is the relationship between our x's and y's? And can we fill in these empty boxes here? So pause this video for a moment and see what you can do. Okay? Okay, so now you've come back. Let's talk about the relationship here. So 4 and 2, 16 and 4, almost looks like a square root. But the square root of 8 is not 3, so that can't be it. Square root of 32 is 5. Well, let's see if we notice it going the opposite direction. That When we went from 8 to 16, that doubled, and this went up by 1. When I went from 16 to 32, the, num the y value went up by 1. So I think if I go from 32 to 64, that's doubled. This should go up by 1, so that should be a 6. That looks okay. And then maybe going the opposite direction here, if I went from, from 2 to 4, that's doubled. So this number should be 1 less. That should be a 1. Likewise, 1 to 2 is doubling it, so this value here should be 1 less, and that's a 0, and that's true. So those all work. This 0, though, if I can't get to a half here. This one does not have a value, so we're going to leave that blank. This one does not have a value. For three, we're not sure. One fourth, this value is actually a negative two, and one eighth is a negative three. So if we need to write a rule that relates our x's and our y's, let's see how we're going to do this. This is going to be two to the Let's see, 2 to this power equals this, so 2 to the y equals x. Let's see if that's true. So 2 to the 0 power equals 1, 2 to the 4th power equals 16. That does work. So that would be our rule here. And the outputs which we weren't able to find, well, we can't do this one, and this one we weren't sure of because we're just doesn't know how that fits in there. Um, okay, and part of the reason we could not find this one is has to do with the domain. And our domain of this mystery function is that x must be greater than 0. So for 0, we could not find a value. Okay, now we have someone believing that this point should be part of this graph, the mystery function. So again, this is my x, this is my y. So if I want to check this, I'm going to have to uh, check 2 raised to the power of 4.585. That's pretty darn close to 24, so yep, I'd say that does belong. Okay, so... How are the outputs for x equals 8 and x equals 1 eighth related? So this one and this one. Well, they're just the negatives of each other, right? So they are the opposite. Of each other. So 3 and negative 3. And opposite's not quite right. The negatives is a better word. Okay, um, number 6. They think that the output for x equals 3 should be 1.5. So take a moment and think about that before we take a look at what the actual answer is. Okay, so this is an incorrect assumption here. So x to the third, so even though 3, it, or sorry, even though 1.5 is halfway between 1 and 2, that does not give us a 3. Anything to a half power 
is a square root. So that's not right. And Farrah wants to know what power she can raise 4 to to get 64. So she writes 4 to the sum power equals 64. How is this similar or different to the mystery function? Well, the mystery function is 2 to some power, would say 64. But in this case, we're looking to 4 raised to some power is 64. So it is quite similar. But how can that help us? Well, since 4 is equal to 2 to the second power, let's see if Farah's answer, Farah's question mark or answer would be 1 half of the mystery function. output. Oops. So with our mystery function, we have 2 to the 6th power is 64. So 2 to the 6th equals 64. So half of 6, so half of 6 equals 3. That should be the answer for Ferris problem. And it is. And just let's take a look now and go over some of the important concepts. Because what these are all about, this mystery function, you hopefully have guessed, is about logarithmic functions. So the output of a log function, let me get this all written down for you. OK, so the output of a logarithmic function tells us what exponent you must raise the base to to arrive at the input for the log. So it's written like this, log base b of x equals y. So y is the exponent that I have to raise the base to. So base raised to this exponent gives me this value. So I can write this in exponential form, which again is the base raised to this value equals this. Base to the output equals the input for the log. If no subscript is given, so no value is written right here, then it is given that the base is space 10. If we have a letter, so if the base is letter E, we use what's called the natural log. So log base E of x is written as ln of x. And you'll notice on your calculators that they do have a special function, ln of x, because we will use that quite a bit. So there's log and there's ln of x. So now let's try and do your, check your understanding. There's three questions here. Give them a shot and see what you can do with them. You've got this.